We are here, we are finally here. I am the Soundtrack Dude, and you are watching episode one of the Soundtrack Dude. Soundtrack Reviews. Today, today we are going to review Air Force One. That is correct. 1997 Air Force One. If you not know, if you do not know what Air Force One is, I'm going to show you. Sorry for the lack of equipment there. Yes, that is the cover there. I'm going to um, show you some. I'm going to go over a little bit of things here. The movie Air Force One is a 1997 movie that runs 122 minutes. The soundtrack runs 96 minutes, which is roughly 79% of the movie, which is actually pretty good for, for a movie covered by a soundtrack. That's uh, quite, quite a bit of soundtrack in a movie. And... Um, Depends. It can either be a good soundtrack, bad soundtrack. But that's a that's a high that's a high piece of the film covered in music. The premise of the movie, if you do not already know, is uh, an American political movie about a group of terrorists who hijack Air Force One. Oh my word! And the U.S. Pre and the U.S. president's attempt to retake the plane and rescue everyone. And who is the composer? Well, well, the composer is Jerry Goldsmith. In case you do not know who Jerry Goldsmith is, God rest his soul. Jerry Goldsmith is one of the one of the better composers who did actually a lot of films in in the in the in the previous uh, previous era of film. So 60s, 70s film. He did such movies as uh, Patton, Papillon. And he was also lucky enough to do 90s films. Such as... Um, what was that movie called? I'm sorry. Hollow Man. Hollow Man, The Mummy. He did uh, Air Force One, of course. And um, and one of my personal favorites, U.S. Marshals. <laughs> now I now I've read some people say that his action film, his action film uh, compositions are kind of cheesy and generic. But I beg to differ. I highly beg to differ. Um, Yes, I I admit, Air Force One kind of mirrored U.S. Marshals, but but um, but no, he he was he was a composer who used um or a lot of orchestral sounds, so brass, heavy heavy um, piano sounds, percussion, and it was really. It was really high pitched, in your face, strong. It was, you listened to Air Force One and it was like listening to, to a horror movie. Air Force One is a thriller, honestly. If you haven't seen the the movie already, um, so it was like listening to a thriller movie. S sorry, listening to music for a thriller movie, or a horror movie. It it has it has its soft moments, and then bang! It hits you with loud music, and and you're just like, wow, shit is hitting the fan right now. But but it does he but he does it in such a way. He does it in such a way where like. With the he does it with the orchestra in a way, that is classical. That's the word I was looking for. It's classical. 
it's classical, so you're like you're hearing orchestral music, you're hearing themes, you're hearing sound, you're hearing rhythm, and he'll move from one sound, so like brass to 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 drums to high pitch piano, so something like and and your nervous system gets gets you know stimulated you you're like whoa dude something's going on right now not exactly sure because i might have seen the movie like i don't know fuck five years ago or i haven't even seen this movie but this music is it's burning me alive so that's that in a nutshell but um let me go over some of some of these songs actually. Um, some uh, points, some of these notable mentions, so to speak. Give me one second here. Sorry about that. Right, okay, so right off the bat, honestly, I'm going to tell you, okay, I have to tell you an anecdote about this soundtrack. So I actually did not listen to this soundtrack until recently, very recently. I had it for the longest time, and I thought, gosh, Air Force One, cheesy movie, you know, heroic president who saves the day on a plane that's been captured by some terrorists. It's probably, probably a soundtrack that's just as bad. But I underestimated Jerry Goldsmith very much. I mean, I like I said, U.S. Marshals was a, a big favorite of mine. But... So I had a buddy who... who asked me, Hey, Marco, uh, what's... Uh, What's 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 uh, what's your what are your top ten favorite soundtracks? So I gave him my top ten, and uh, I gave him my top ten, which I cannot list off the top of my head right now. Actually, funny enough, and and I just happened to dump U.S. Marshals in there, just just I don't know I, I can't count for some reason. So though there happened to be eleven soundtracks, so he he mentioned it to me after. He's like, you actually gave me 11, ha ha ha, I asked for 10, and so I was like, you know what, bro, keep it, fuck it, like, Jerry Goldsmith is enough of a badass, so, so consider it a bonus. See, the problem with U.S. Marshals is that the original release for the movie sucked. Yes, it sucked. The, the soundtrack is amazing. But the release sucked. They cut off half of the soundtrack off the album, and um, and and it just it's not it's not a worthy listen. I mean, there's a few songs in there that that you listen to once in a while, you know. But but it's like, where's the rest of it? So it's like consider that a bonus, you know, just just so you know how good how good Jerry Goldsmith is. So I actually got a hold of Air Force One pre prior to that because it was Jerry Goldsmith, because I knew how good he was on U.S. Marshals. But I had never listened to it around that time. And when I did listen to it, the first song, the first scene in the movie called The Parachutes, the first couple seconds, it's like a fanfare. Oh my god, it's like a fanfare. He enters the movie with these brass sort of sort of cues and this sort of patriotic American theme. 
And it's like, wow. Even through your headphones, you're you're like listening to to a live show. You're listening to a live show and you're right in the middle of it and and I didn't even have to friggin' listen to the rest of it. And I already knew I I I, I already knew it was amazing. I was like, wow, I don't know how I didn't listen to you sooner. So the first song it's it's amazing. Anyways, um, ba, 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 ba. after that, it goes sort of up and down. Uh, strong themes, uh, soft themes, and then you reach the hijacking. The hijacking is a full seven minutes, eight minutes actually, almost. <laughs> and it's it's. <sighs> I have to play this. I have to play this, I'm sorry. So you start off with something soft like that. You think, you think things are kind of okay, maybe not so bad. And then he hits you. And he goes for about eight minutes with that's with that sound as a central theme. Dun 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 and then it's basically I'm guessing the scene where the terrorists take the plane. So that's followed by after the after the terrorists call the White House, that's followed by a song called Empty Rooms, which I'm not exactly sure what happens there. But that again starts out soft a couple seconds in and he just hits you whoa shit hits the fan and, and you're and you're looking for something to hold on to And there's the piano. That is that is definitely one of my favorite songs. When it's like after the whole dun 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 dun, dun he goes do 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 on the piano. Uh P loves to use high pitch piano. He did a lot on on the US Marshall's album. I believe he did more so on on this on this soundtrack, but he did it very effectively, I think. It was more it was more of a he used it differently on US Marshall's, but but he did it very effectively on this soundtrack for sure. Um And then, of course, get off my plane. This is basically when he fights the leader of the terrorist, uh, Raddick, played by Gary Oldman. You're not sure who Gary Oldman is. He played uh, the, the police chief in Christopher Nolan's Batman movies. For that a little bit.
There it is. So that's the central theme of the second half of the movie, where he goes, uh, where the album goes. And as kind of monotonous as it sounds at first, where uh, where he he sort of repeats the same cue over and over and over and over. It's kind of it's kind of a, a method, I believe, of like you know, it's not it the the situation itself is not over yet. You're still you're still in it. And you're still being carried through the whole mess. And it's actually, he does it, he doesn't do it sort of monotonously in the, in the way that it's the same cue. It changes, te- it changes tempo. It changes the way, it changes in the way that, that it's played. In, in essence, in regards that um, sort of, uh, for example... He'll go, so so it'll be like that, twice played, but then he'll be, so it sounds the same, but it's actually different. It's like, it's like, it's like the same theme, but it's, it's being, uh, it's a variance of the theme. It's a variance of the cue. So, so it it actually it actually picks you up and takes you with it. If that if that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So after spoiler alert, after Radic's death, um, there's escape from Air Force One. And and credits and and uh, a reprise of parachutes, which is basically, you know, same themes throughout. So that those are like the notable songs, probably some of my favorite songs, on this on this particular album. Overall, though, I do think it's a very good listen. I mean. I, I, truthfully, I went to I went to I went to bed with it yesterday, before making this video. I've listened to it several times ever since I first heard it. Not every day, like I listen to some of my other ones, but um, but probably ten times already. At at least, I would not be surprised if that was the count. Why? Because it's a, fuck, it's a good, it's a good soundtrack. I mean, Jerry Goldsmith. I have some other Jerry Goldsmith pieces, and I am kind of excited to listen to them now. So, having said that, we are now going to do the soundtrack, dude. Uh, ten point rating. 10 point rating or um I don't know if this is gonna fucking work. The soundtrack dude Ostometer. In case you don't know what an OST is, it's OST stands for original soundtrack. So I've created 10 bullet points. 10 bullet points where a soundtrack can can get points in a rating. Yeah, that makes sense. Where soundtrack can get points in a rating. So number one is consistency. Number one is consistency. Um, I'm going to give. I'm going to give Air Force One. A point for consistency because it's complete. There's no BS where 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 songs are missing, songs are out of order. It, and it's 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 good from start to finish. You know, no surprises there. 
actually consistency and completion excuse me number one is consistency meaning the songs are not out of order and there's nothing missing so a point there number two is completion what am I saying right now yeah consistency my bad apparently I don't know what consistency means so number one is the songs are not out of order it's it's too fucking early I'm sorry number two is completion meaning there are no songs missing so a point for each category the third one is sound what does the soundtrack sound like how what does how does the soundtrack sound throughout the soundtrack is it good is it weak is it is it exciting is it what the fuck am i listening to it's well, you could already tell by my description that it's it's pretty freaking good. I'm I'm gonna have to give it uh, one and a half. Well, honestly, honestly, I'm I actually I actually give two points per category. So I don't know whether to give one and a half in this category or two, because. Because it does have its weak moments, but but it's, um, I don't know. I guess I woke up kind of lenient. <sighs> Fuck it, two it is. Um, the next one is themes. What are the themes like? Are there themes? Uh, that that's an easy one. I mean, there's the there's the parachute theme, I guess, for lack of a better word, which was used throughout. You know, patriotic moments, heroic moments. It's more like the the good guy, uh, that word archetype. And then there's the there's like uh there's like the terrorist theme, which was more like a soft beeping. It'd be like can't really do it, but if you listen to it, it was it kinda added like a tone of mystery, tone of like we're in trouble. Tone of like uh Yeah. Um and then there was uh, there was the fighting theme, which is the one I discussed in depth more so. The one that was that one that went dun 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 dun. That one I think Jerry did again, where he added a a separate theme on the second half of the film. I might have mentioned this earlier actually, and he did it very well. He did the same thing with U.S. Marshals. And that's what upsets me very much. They cut that part out of the album. They cut that part out of the album in U.S. Marshals. And that's probably the best theme in the whole damn movie. And and they 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 refuse to release a, an expanded soundtrack. But but I will rant on that one when I review that album. So let's let's keep talking about. Air Force One and not go off on a tangent. Um, so themes, obviously a full two points there. Five, uh, category five is dynamics, which means, um, which essentially means how did, how well did, did, uh, did, did the composer use the themes? Did the composer use the themes um, sort of uh, interchangeably, you know? In a soft uh, sort of sound, in a strong sort of sound, slowly, high tempo. How how did the how did the soundtrack essentially come about? Or or yeah, 
how did it how did it come about in the sense that um what was it like what was it like uh i don't know let me give you an example one of my favorite ones uh face off so the main the main theme for that one is uh da 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 da, da. and and what John Powell did was um for the action theme or sorry the action scenes he would he would use a, a high pitched you know uh, brass strings sort of uh sound for for the theme but then like if there was a, if it was like a dialogue te- intense or 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 even like a dramatic slower slower moving scene it would be more like dun 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 sometimes going as simply as uh just uh like like a single set of strings or or even like uh like like bells or 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 what do you call it a uh, xylophone so so yeah so what are the dynamics like how 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 good is the is the soundtrack made how well are the sounds used I'm going to give it I have to give it 1.5 1. 1.5 5 or yeah 1.5 1, 1 is 1 would be too mean 6 6 is creativity creativity is similar to dynamics except except it's different in the sense that how did uh, how did uh, the composer create it's a little redundant how did the composer come up with new methods come up with new methods of sort of um, um, new methods of sound new methods of uh, of uh, getting what's on screen into audio I guess because I've, I've noticed in a, in a few if in, a, in a few of the newer soundtracks I've been listening to, is that sometimes your central theme isn't necessary to get something um, to get something to get something sounding good in a scene to get a scene moving with music. If your central theme isn't always necessarily your go-to, yes, it helps for for major themes for like themes that create. Uh, movement scenes sorry for scenes that create movement in the film or your climactic scenes for example but sometimes other types of secondary scenes could use are better off with with different types of sounds different types of cues so and that's where the composer's creativity comes in what what is their creativity in making in making cues that that are not necessarily aligned, let's let's say, with 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 their central themes. So, like, again, I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to use uh, Face Off as an example because that's, that's pretty much the only one I have in my head right now. Um. So the the one I previously I previously sort of uh, sung sung out loud, da, 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 da. that was this like the the one central theme of that film. But then during the prison escape, um, scene, he only manages to use that theme once in that scene. Everything else is like um, loud bangs, loud cues, and and a mix of 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 a, a theme that goes dun 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 
And he goes on like that for two, three minutes. And then hits you with the da 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 da. Sometimes I'm upset that he didn't use it more. Other times it's just I actually feel yes, he was actually, you know, thinking out of the box. And that's what I mean by creativity. So I'm going to have to give Air Force One a 1.5. 1.5 sounds fair. And in, an induction. How does the soundtrack induce you? Does it, uh, by this I mean, does it, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Does it uh, create, I guess, for lack of a better word, does it create feelings? Does it make you emotional? Does it uh, make you scared? Does it does it uh, make you excited? Does it does it uh, does it get you moving? Does it stimulate your your nervous system, your 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 mind, your imagination? Does it does it make you conjure pictures of what of what might be going on? Because even though some soundtracks I've seen the films for for this for the set soundtrack. A lot of these I have not. I just I just grab the soundtrack and I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm going I'm going to listen to this for the for the sake of listening to it. And 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 the music moves you, you know? You listen to a classical piece. And classical it's like classical music. Classical music wasn't written to anything, but it moves you. It conjures up emotions, it conjures up thoughts, it conjures up different different things in your head, in your in your in your heart, and your and so and, and that's what the soundtrack should do. What what so this rating is how well does it do that? Or does it do it at all? So I'm going to give Air Force One a one point five or a two a two or one point five uh, two it is it's a two yeah it's a two strength the next couple ones are a bit tricky Strength. Uh, strength as in how strong is the soundtrack? Because um, if you watch a film, sometimes the soundtrack doesn't come through um, loud enough or, or well enough. And it could be, sometimes you think it's because the soundtrack sucks. And, and, and in reality, it's because it hasn't been it's because it was dubbed poorly meaning meaning they might have edited the the sound of uh, sound effects or sound of dialogue uh, higher to sound higher than the actual soundtrack than the actual music and that that hurts the soundtrack a lot and usually that's that's what's crappy about um, about the participation, I guess, in, in of soundtracks and movies is that they'll get sort of the back burner in the audio track. So it'll be it'll be like dialogue, I guess, uh, sound effects, and then and then the music. And one I can one particular example I can attribute to this is uh, the movie The Money Train. I listen to Mark Mancini as the Money Train, and wow, it is so mind-blowingly good. It's particularly short. I have mixed feelings about that, but um, I mean, guitar, brass, piano. I mean, it it it's it just it can go from like soft jazzy tunes to like explosive orchestral tunes. 
And and you're talking about a movie. You're talking about a movie with trains. Two cops where shit goes down on subway trains. And so that doesn't allow for very much music to get through sometimes or or in a lot of the movie. And mind you, this is one of my favorite movies, so I've seen it a few times. And especially in the climactic scene, which is actually probably like a few of the best songs in the soundtrack, which is uh, unfortunate. Because like the sound effects are so loud that you can, the fortunately though, ironically, fortunately, the soundtrack was dubbed a bit well in that you can actually hear it if you listen to it. But but some of it is lost. Some of it is lost in the sounds of, of the of the sound effects of, of everything going on in the film. And that's and that's what I mean by strength of the soundtrack. How how well does it come through in the in the movie? Now now I haven't I haven't seen Air Force One or let me correct myself. I have seen Air Force One. But it but it it's been a while. I don't know, five, six years. I'm not positive. But being as it may I'm going to I'm going to associate it again with US Marshals. Forgive me for doing this. US Marshals was was another strong soundtrack and it came through well in that movie. They dubbed it extremely well. And being being as um as like as creatively and as dynamically strong as it is Air Force 1 I would not be surprised if um, if it's strong in the movie, despite everything going on, despite planes, despite people screaming, despite people getting spoiler alert killed, despite despite oh my god, where's the president? He's not in the escape hatch. Um, yeah. So I will give it a fair one point five. Number nine is another tricky one. Um, allegiance. Allegiance, which means how good was the was the was the film? How how true how true was the soundtrack to the film? How true was the soundtrack to the film? So were any were any post production were any post production changes made? Was there any sort of bits and pieces missing that were that that might have been in the film for some reason, but not on the soundtrack? Um, again, this 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 also it goes hand in hand with um, completion. Uh, were parts taken out entirely? Um, I'm gonna say. Similar to strength, because I haven't seen the film in a while, but I'm gonna say 1.5, and I judge this based on on the length of the soundtrack. I judge it based on on the names of the titles. You can tell like not a single area is missed. 1.5, just because of that, you know, the margin of error. And last but not least, number 10 is overall performance. Overall performance is basically my own personal sort of um, rating. What did I think about it? What did I think about it? How did it speak to me? How did it move me? And I think, I think here's the one problem that I have with Air Force One. And I keep mentioning this in this video. I keep saying Jerry Goldsmith, US Marshals, US Marshals, US Marshals. I mean, don't get me wrong, US Marshals was amazing, except for that the deletion issue. Or whatever. But um but 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 um uh, but that's that's the problem right there. 
it's like the 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 guy in the article I mentioned earlier that said the his his action scores were cheesy, generic, and all the same. I mean, maybe, but not really. Not really. I mean, I I felt certain sort of uh, sort of uh, vibes from U.S. Marshals, but um, but not exactly. Not exactly. I mean, after listening to it, what what after really listening to it, after really listening to multiple soundtracks from the same composer, what you get is is a style. What you get is a style. What you what you get is a method. It's a, a means of doing things. But not really. Sometimes. I mean. I mean, I attributed Mark Mancina's "Money Train" with speed the first few times I heard it. Just the way that he took. This just the way that he put the different cues together, the way that uh, he increased decreased tempo. But but Money Train is a is a vastly different soundtrack, vastly different. So yeah, I it's like. If you really listen to certain soundtracks from composers, you can you can tell there's a, that 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 some of them, if not most of them, have their own particular style. But um, but yeah, I think I think the soundtrack varies because. Because you know you're you're watching different movies. It's it there are two soundtracks to, to two different movies, so there's no way that they can be, you know, like that similar. This is about a, a president trapped on a plane trying to trying to free his his cabinet from from terrorists. The other one is about a a marshal trying to trying to you know. Spoiler alert, trying to capture a black ops expert who has been accused of double homicide. I mean, apples and oranges. So to end it off, overall performance, an easy two. Because this first time I heard it, I was like, wow, that's fucking great. That's a keeper. That is a keeper. So after collection of all points, we uh, da, da, da. let's see something here. After collection of all points, um, we essentially draw a percentage rating. And Air Force One gets 90%. 90%. Which is not bad. I had actually given it a lower rating before the video, but um, I don't know. Changed my mind early so I don't really know what's going on right now who knows but 90 it is Air Force One gets 90 percent um, so if you want to listen to it I highly recommend that you do if you want to watch the movie watch the movie it's uh, not a terrible picture but, um, I don't know, if you're bored or something, watch the movie. It's Harrison Ford. Why not? And I'm going to end it there. Holy shit. I didn't notice how much sunlight was coming in. I will see you in episode two. Uh, well...